Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to be carrying out a replacement of the crankcase vent valve on uh, on my 730D. Now, uh, crankcase vent valve, uh, sometimes called the crankcase breather valve, uh, sits basically on top of the valve cover, roughly in this area here. So as you can see, we obviously need to remove like a couple of panels uh, and a few parts just to be able to access it. What we're, uh, what we're actually looking at is this part here. That's what we're actually going to be replacing. And this section here is the vortex that sits, that sits inside, uh, basically like so. Now, what um, the purpose of this is basically to allow um, the vapor that um, builds up within the crankcase to um, be expelled from the crankcase. It then goes through the vent valve where the oil is separated from the gas. Um, the gas is then sent back through the inlet manifold and the oil obviously goes back into the engine where it belongs. Um, now, in the event that this has failed, uh, what the, the kind of symptoms you would get would probably be things like um, a lot of smoke on acceleration because what's happening is the oil isn't being separated and the oil is ended up in the inlet manifold and being burnt as part of the combustion process. So replacing this should cure that. So what we'll do, let's talk, let's get on with it. <laughs> Okay, first thing we need to do is take off this top cover. There's a few, few screws holding it on top, five all together. Well, there should be five. I'm missing the one that goes there. And there we go. Then it's just a case of lifting it out like so. Right, now we move that out of the way, we can actually see it. That is what we're going to be, uh, that's what we're going to be changing. Now, as you can see, the air filter box um, basically uh, covers part of it, so that needs to come off as well. So we need to take the, the cover off the side of the air box, remove the air filter, and then uh, this panel can be removed. Again, it's just a few screws um, that all hold it together. There's there's a couple at the back here that are a bit of a pig to get to. Once we've got them off, um, what we'll need to do is probably remove this uh, so we can get this panel off at the back and then uh, we should have pretty decent access. So what I'll do, I'll remove all of this stuff that I need uh, to move in order to get access and then I'll bring you back in when we're uh, ready to replace it. Okay, as you can see, we've got really, really good access to the... Uh, to the breather valve now um, and as you can see i've removed quite a bit of stuff in order to be able to get good access to it now it looks like a lot but it actually took me about 10 minutes to get it to this position um, obviously you've got the the inlet which sits on the side of the uh, well here's the air box here actually it sits on the side of the air box like so once you've got that off um literally is just three screws um you'll obviously be left with this now this one two three four screws and then a fifth one just inside this cover and then that can come off now in order to get to those ones it can be a bit of a pain and you do need to uh, really remove the uh, the section of the firewall which is this one just here and as you can see um, it, it just unbolts uh, at the front here you've got two uh, 10 mil bolts either side and in the back you've got a little T30 screw on either side. Now, in order to access that, what we need to do is just pop um, each of the cabin filters off on each side, and you'll be able to see the uh, you'll be able to see the screw perfectly fine. Once that's out, then you can get this cover from the back of the engine out, and again, that's only held in with two screws. And then what we are left with is what you see here. So now we can actually get to the uh, we can actually get to the breather valve and remove it. So that's what we'll do next. Okay, so to remove the uh, vent valve, there's literally four Allen headed screws. One at the front, 
like that. Two in the middle. Another one. Just there. And lastly, there's another one right at the back. In the back corner. And that is all of them. And um, we've got it all the way out. Okay, so it does take a little bit of a tug to get it off. Make sure we've got all of the screws all the way out. And that one's actually come out entirely. They're actually supposed to be captive. And there we go. This is the old one. And interestingly, it's actually entirely missing the vortex section, which absolutely dumbfounds me. Um, no idea why it's uh, been fitted like that. Um, but yeah, there should be a uh, vortex section. So what I'll do, I'll go and grab the other part and uh, I'll show you what I mean. So this is the part that should have been inside here. It should have been inside there like that. Um, obviously a previous owner has at some point taken this off and just completely removed it and junked it. Now, sometimes you will find on um, earlier versions of these that there is actually just like a bit of sponge in there. And what that sponge does is that sponge traps the oil um, and stops it going back into the uh, back into the inlet manifold. But obviously over time, those little bits of sponge um, break down uh, and get sucked into the inlet manifold and actually they, they're just horrible um, and BMW did actually replace um, those with these kind uh, inlet iterations so that's worth bearing in mind. Um, yeah I'm, I'm actually quite baffled as to why somebody just didn't fit it um, it's quite uh, quite weird. Anyway what we're gonna do we'll um, pull all the old gaskets off here's the old ones they actually feel pretty horrible and uh, manky. It's like a little tab for you to pull on to, a little tab there just to pull on to remove it. Um, we've got brand new ones in there. Uh, there's also a little O-ring for the, uh, that sits um, around the opening inside the, the vent valve. Um, we need to fit that as well. So yeah, let's, uh, let's get the new gaskets out, get it all fitted. Right then, in the package, we'll take the, uh, the actual valve out itself and here's the uh, here's the two new gaskets what I like to do um, with these kind of gaskets is just give them a little bit of red rubber grease all over this just keeps them nice and supple and um, if they're nice and supple they don't crack and if they don't crack they don't leak and helps prolong the life of them um, if you look at these ones these are all pretty minging and um, they feel quite brittle um, and that's what this helps us avoid. Right, so that's them, nicely greased. And then what we can do is fit them back in where they go and just tuck, tuck it all the way around back into the groove. And there we go. That is the first one fitted second one they'll only go in one way round so you can't really get it wrong just guide it into place come on get in there all the way around And there we are. Now these ones actually sit slightly proud, whereas the ones I took off didn't, um, because obviously they've been squashed over time. 
but that's them done. Next thing we need to do, take our vortex and just pop it into position, just like so. And that's how that one sits. Right, next thing we need to do is prep the actual valve um, with its O-ring. Again, a little bit of red rubber grease all the way around. Wipe my hands on my trousers and then that's fitted just like so. Right, now what we need to do, pop this onto the valve cover. Okay, let's take our valve and uh, get it fitted onto the car. Now, uh, what's worth doing if you need to, if there's a lot of carbon and um, dried up oil inside here, just give it a clean out before we do this. Uh, but as it goes, mine happens to be okay. Get it into position. Give it a little wiggle and she should go on. And there we are. Right. There we are, into place. Then, get all the screws started. That's one. Don't tighten them yet, just get them all started first. Um, make sure they all start before you actually tighten any up. That's them all started. These won't be very tight, they'll only be about 10 newton meters, so don't don't lean on them. Last one. And there we go. Four. And that is that. That is it installed. All we need to do now is obviously put the car back together, fire her up, make sure she's all good. But uh, yeah, that is the uh, that is the process for the crank vent valve completely replaced. Um, obviously, it's gonna, it's gonna uh, actually be doing its job with the vortex section inside. Um, it wouldn't have actually been doing anything. So uh, any oil that would have been in there would have ended up in my inlet manifold and probably made it quite dirty inside. Um, but yeah, this, uh, this should, um, cure any smoking. Uh, to be per perfectly honest, I hadn't actually noticed any uh, on acceleration. Um, hadn't really been paying much attention, but uh, th th there certainly wasn't anything excessive that I had noticed. So, um, it, you know, it's not been to the detriment of the car. Right, I'll get it all back together and then uh, I'll bring it back. Okay, there we are. That is everything back together. Um, and that is the uh, crankcase vent valve replaced. Now, um, it's not a particularly taxing job. The, this whole thing, uh, including the filming, has taken me about 30, 35 minutes. Um, so yeah, anybody can achieve this at home. Um, obviously, I didn't really go into any detail about the uh, the trims and stuff that I need to take off because obviously that's specific to the car. Now, this, this obviously is a seven series, but this engine is used in E46s, uh, E60s, uh, E -60s, um, X5s, uh, you know, there's like all sorts of things. So, um, 
what I do want to point out though is that it's actually the same process on the M47 engine, the, the two litre version, uh, four cylinder. It's exactly the same process. Obviously, you're just missing the, the front two cylinders. Um, other than that, the actual process for changing this is exactly the same. Um, it's just the access to it will obviously depend upon your car. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that is the process. So hopefully, um, hopefully you enjoyed the video, maybe found it useful. Um, thank you for, for stopping by. Don't forget to hit the like, um, the like icon, uh, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you all again for the, uh, for the next video from Kev Shed. Thank you guys. Bye bye now.